In this week's show, we've returned down to Perthshire, where we're going to be fishing the stunningly beautiful Butterson Loch, which lies in the hills above Dunkeld. It's early season, we've been granted special permission to come on here before the loch gets going in earnest for the season, and we're going to be fishing for overwintered rainbows on the top of the water, and we're also going to be talking about and fishing early season tactics for the fish that have went in uh, just recently there. Uh, we're also going to be having a chat to the, the new fishery manager, Charles Lush, who's going to be telling us about the exciting plans for the future and how this fishery is one of the most delightful places to come and fish throughout the season in Scotland. I hope you enjoy the show. Situated in the hills above Dunkeld, only a short distance from the A9, Butterson Loch offers the visiting angler, without a doubt, one of the best fishing experiences to be had in Perthshire. Stocked weekly, Butterson Loch offers hard fighting blue trout, rainbow trout and also wild brown trout and pike and is open from early March right through to the end of the season. Fish get caught on the loch in a range of tactics, ranging from lures fish deep right up to nymph and dry fly on the surface. And certainly summer evenings can be something else on here, especially the all night sessions where I've seen myself catch upwards of 20 fish, all off the top of the water. The quality of the fish that go into Burson I've always found to be exceptional. The average size you're going to be looking at pound and three quarters up to two and a half, three pound, but weekly there's many fish coming out much larger than that. So always worth a go. So early season tactics for trout on lochs such as Butterson. You know it's not rocket science catching the stockies but if you're going to be looking for the overwinter fish you've kind of got to put a bit more thought into it. Obviously overwinter fish a bit more educated they're going to be feeding on natural patterns. Although you will still pick them up on lures but from experience fishing the imitations is where you're going to get them. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be fishing the top of the water. We're going to be, it's quite cold so there's not going to be lots and lots of fish rising but there will be one or two and we're just going to basically stock and, and target these fish. Uh, following on from that we're going, to, we're going to go back to standard early season tactics, you know fishing sunk lines with uh, lures and boobies uh, and we'll, we'll be fishing nymphs as well to see what we could do and just, just basically give it a an all-round an all-round cast so looking at flies lines and things like that for early season you know we've got dwell backs we've got boobies damsels uh, and, and buzzers buzzers are one of the one of the the best best flies to use not just early season but all season uh, my setup uh, when I'm fishing early season I'll sometimes fish two or three rods today we've got a rod uh, here with the uh, 10 foot 8 weight rod it's got the DI5 Cortland line on it which allow me to, to fish really really deep down and dredge the bottom almost to try and get these uh, these fish that are going to be sulking because the water is still very cold with the snow melt. On the other hand we've got the floating line here again it's on a it's on an eight weight uh, sorry seven eight weight and it's a, a ten foot rod as well and that'll basically allow me to quickly pick that up and, and cover any fish if they're if they're moving around. On the 8 weight DI5 here, uh, I'm going to be fishing with a 12.5 pound Grand Max fluorocarbon. And that just allows me to 
give it that bit more beef, you know, and, and be confident and certainly knowing that the fish isn't gonna isn't gonna come off or certainly snap the line. And you know, when you are fishing deep with boobies and lures, these some of these fish could really walk you quite hard and it's it's not uncommon to be fishing sort of six, seven, eight pound breaking strain and, and get snapped. So so I'm I'm just gonna go with that little bit that little bit higher in strength just to ensure that I keep a hold of that fish. On the uh, the floater here, uh, I will be fishing eight pounds. Okay, so the eight pound fluorocarbon, again, Grand Max. Uh, I prefer fluorocarbon when fishing top of the water as it does sink as opposed to monofilament. Uh, but what I do do is obviously grease it so it's uh, it's not shining in the light, which fluorocarbon can be bad for. So they've, they've both got pros and cons. Uh, in terms of flies, we're going to be fishing uh, on the floater. We're going to be trying emergers. We're going to be fishing dual backs and buzzers. And on the, uh, the sinking line, we're going to be fishing you know, typical early early season flies for stocked fish. You know, your humongous, uh, you know, white cats uh, and various various nymphs as well. We'll we'll, we'll try them down deep. But I'll uh, I'll show you a selection shortly, just to just to give you an idea of what we're going to be fishing. Early season it is suck it and see. You've got to find find the depth that the fish are feeding at. Uh, certainly when fishing uh, below the surface, and you've got to obviously find the colour or flies that they're going to be taking. So it really is, you know, your first hour or two, you're really hunting around trying to see what these fish, what depth that they're at and what they're going to be taking. Uh, so if you're in a boat with a partner, it's always an idea for one to be fishing up in the water, one to be fishing down in the water, not to be fishing both the same lines and the same techniques. Alter it about and once you come to the stage where you're, you're hitting fish, then you could uh, play about with your other droppers and try and make all three flies working at once if you if you do fish a team of flies. Um, as far as lock style techniques, uh, the early season, you know, I, I wouldn't really be fishing traditionals on here. Although they will work, it wouldn't be my choice. But later on in the season, as uh, the fish are going to be coming up uh, for the even rise, if there's a nice if there's a nice uh, breeze on the water, fishing muddlers, you know, traditional wets, they will work. Uh, they will really work, as well as hoppers and daddies and things like that. So, good bit of variety, and uh, yeah, just chop and change till you find what works right, and uh, you should have a good day. And certainly the quality of fishing here and the amount of fishing here, you know. There's, there's always a good day to be had. So we'll, we'll go and give it a try.
that buzzer, if you look at the tail, fully overwintered. Stunning fish, around about three, maybe three and a half pounds. Good fight as well. So we'll get back to fight another day. There he goes. Excellent. It's worth the chase. So Chris, thanks for having us down today. Uh, you and your dad have been working in the, the fishing tackle trade in Stirling for quite a while now, yeah? Yeah, uh, 14 years 14 since we years. started, yeah. Now, from what I remember previously, you had the shop in Stirling itself, uh, but you've moved to this fantastic premises. What, what was the story behind that? Yeah, so we, we moved here in December 2011. Really, it was expansion for us. We outgrew the... The, the previous shop mm. served us very well for 12 years, but literally we were just uh, we had too much stock and we needed a bigger premises to display that. So we expanded into this location and it served us very well for the last couple of years. Business is going well then. Sure. So Chris, coming to this new premises next to the, the Bull Mart in Stirling, you know, it's for a fisherman, it's an ideal location. You've pretty much got the, the weekly exodus going up to the Sutherland and the Highlands and, exactly. and certainly up the D side as well, so surely that's a, a great advantage for you. Yeah, our, uh, our location here really couldn't be better. We're in uh, the heart of central Scotland, just off Junction 10 on the N9 motorway. We're located on the A84 and we're on the banks of the river in four teeth meetings. It's a cracking venue to stop off at on the, the way north to the River Tay, mm -hmm. River Don, the River Dee, the Spey. Even if you're going past in the A84, heading up to the Lake of Keith or indeed the Trossies, ideal stop. Absolutely place. perfect. Very impressive. Uh, another plus point is Dobie's Garden Centre's right next door, so it's a great place to drop off the partner. Mm -hmm. It takes a bit of pressure off you when you're coming in and looking around the the tackle itself. Ah, good day on a Sunday as well when you're not allowed to go up the river and fish for salmon you know you could come down and uh, spend some money. <laughs> Definitely it's always good to hear. So Chris obviously you've got a cracking shop here people want to come around and browse your extensive stock yeah. but for those that are a bit further afield or, or can't get down you've got a fantastic website that's yeah kind of updated daily with the extensive stock on it. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the web is massive for us at the moment. It really is our shop window into the store and equally for customers visiting the store mm -hmm. and further afield all over Europe, etc. Sure. You can go in there, check our daily offers. It is updated daily. Uh, but special promotions, that's the place to find it out. We also have live stock figures so you mm -hmm. can buy with confidence, check online mm -hmm. before you come. Yep. There's nothing worse than, than buying something that's not in stock. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, that's really key key for us. And deliveries? Deliveries, uh, we operate a same same day dispatch policy. So you order before 3pm and we will uh, dispatch it that day. And we also offer next day delivery as, as part of the service. Mm -hmm. if, you're any, like, if you're anything like me, that's, that's pretty key. I usually decide the day before what I'm, what I'm buying well, before I go fishing. The internet these days is very much about convenience. Yeah, no, that's 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 really good. It's, it's vitally important. And what's the web address? It's anglinactive.co.uk. Well, let's, and we'll, we'll try and have a, another look at that. But it's a, it's a, definitely a, a plus for the business, that's for sure. Excellent. So, in terms of staff, uh, what, what about your workforce here? How many people have you got working for you? Uh, we've currently got eight staff in, in Rising Greg. We like to think when when customers come in in store, we've got a relaxed environment. 
the staff are very well informed to help them with all their angling choices. That's good. And obviously all your staff they fish yourself. Uh, we have a dedicated team with each and every member of staff you always mm. have that, that niche angling sure. that they specialise in. So there's always somebody that can help you with you can cover with a week, whether it be pike, sea fishing, fly fishing, course fishing. Definitely yeah. Control. yeah, absolutely. Well that's that's kind of vital, especially down in this neck of the woods because you've got such such a big variety of fishing around here. We're really spoiled for choice of fishing. Yeah, the without a doubt. Without, without, yeah. In fact you've you've actually got one of the, the top meets in Scotland on your doorstep. Yeah, a couple of years ago I had the title of having the, the, the number one beat in Scotland. So it's serves us very well having yeah. that in our doorstep. Yeah, which is a which is this public water as well, which is which and is pretty good. The, the lake of the teeth which could probably pass as one of the premier fish in yeah, definitely. is definitely, definitely on our road. At Cabin Valley also, you know, yeah. it's, uh, it's not bad yeah. As is Loch Leven actually, <laughs> so, so you're you're kind of slap bang in the middle of it. Not too bad at all. Absolutely, it? definitely not. So obviously you you, you cater for all uh, all disciplines of fishing. Tell us a little bit about your brands in terms of sort of trout and salmon fishing. What kind of brands do you deal with? So we we stock all the, the leading brands mm -hmm. uh, in salmon game fishing. Clothing brands you'll see behind you such as Sims, do a lot with Patagonia, particularly mid layer fleeces etc. Mm -hmm. Stock modern brands like GoPro, mm -hmm. it's synonymous with the uh, modern angling yep. capture. Captured a lot of footage on mm. the, the head cameras from GoPro. Yeah, very much so. Going into rods and, and reels, we stock the, the budget products from Shakespeare right up to the more expert rods such as Harpy Guideline. Also, stock Loop, specialising reel fly lines, we're a real main dealer. Any reel fly line that you're looking for, you can get it here. That's fantastic, and again, you've got them in stock. If anybody's need them the next day, they could order, and it'll be on their doorstep the next day. Definitely, definitely. that's great. That's good. And if you need a bit of advice with anything that you're that you're that you're looking for, just drop by or give mm -hmm. us a call. Yeah, that's fine. And the numbers at the bottom of the screen. So, Chris, we've come upstairs to the uh, fly section, which is quite extensive. You've got a, a cracking selection of flies right across from salmon, sea trout. Right through to your rainbow lures and, and traditionals. Mm -hmm. Just tell us a little bit about the flies, where you get them from. Yeah, uh, our main supplier for flies is Caledonia Fly Company. They're a local supplier to us based in Creef, and it's, it's great to use a local supplier because you get that extra bit of service from them. Sure. We, we find the quality of their flies superior to anything else, particularly their salmon selection. But you're right, we stock an extensive selection right the way through salmon. Doubles, tubes, great range of sea trout flies, and of course the trout traditionals and modern lures, That's buzzers, it. etc. And obviously your pike flies as well, which are a grown quite... aspect of the sport, and you can see some of the size of them. Yeah, cracking, cracking beasts. Great flies. Yeah, definitely. You fly lines. You've got uh, hundreds of fly lines there. Obviously, you've got your trout and your your salmon. What, what kind of brands do you stock and types of lines? Uh, so. All major fly line brands, the, the main one that we do for trout would be Airflow, do a lot of trout fly lines, particularly in their sinkers. Uh, Real fly lines, do an extensive selection of them, particularly the spear lines, modern shooting heads. Uh, probably make the, the best shooting heads available on the market at the moment. Yeah, no, that's fantastic. I mean, your stock is fantastic from float tubes to the to, to, to bags to, to rod racks to fly lines. You've, you've got everything and uh, it's in stock. So, you know, first class venue, without a doubt. That's good. Thanks, Dave. Well, I think uh, we're going to go and have a wee chat with your partner in crime now. Fine. Yeah, we'll go yeah. and have a, a few words and see what he's got to say. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, Martin, you're the you're the man of the moment. You, this is this is your your ship. Effectively, you started the the business back in what year? 1999. 1999. So that's quite a while. What's the difference between now and then? Is it how? For... I'm no longer the man of the moment. <laughs> I'm, I'm like yesterday's man. But yeah, I started it with the full support of Chris, mm -hmm. and he has just built it from strength to strength, really. Yeah, to, but, to where we are now. Yeah, it's a fantastic place you've got, and the, the stock. You know, it's good to see so much stock. There's nothing worse than, than buying online and knowing that they haven't got it in stock. Chris would already tell you, mm -hmm. we, we have a livestock, mm -hmm. uh, so you can go and look and see we've got it in stock. Mm -hmm. When it does go out, we won't actually debit your card mm -hmm. until it's actually in the home, but ready to go. It's ideal. That's it. Uh, 
thanks very much for having us. It's been a fantastic day and good to see you're doing really well down here. Yeah, really. So no problem at all. Yeah. Thank you. Coming towards the end of the day with booby on, uh, we're fishing down deep. We will have had fish off the surface, but again, the water's still very cold, it's been bright. The fish we've had off the surface have been good, but just to, to get that sport, we went down, we're fishing into the deep hole here where there's a, there's a few fish lying on the booby, and uh, we've got a humongous booby on the point and a, a small peach cat booby on the, on the dropper, and there's two flies. As your fly goes long, you start moving it, the baby goes down and up. So completely the reverse if you're fishing with a weak fly. But love them or loathe them, they are effective. So count to about 25, 30 seconds. Get down to the bottom. Oh, 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 oh. Yep, there we go. Just like that. That's how you do it. So there's no doubt about it. They are effective. It's not a big fish, but this one's on the humongous. Oh no, it's on the beach. There we go. This is a small rainbow, about a pound, pound and a half. And again, this one's a stock fish. It's obvious, the tail's ragged. There's a, there's a bit of marker on it. Not a huge fish, but a good fish all the same. Again, when you're fishing, you do the, uh, the 
93 regime just to cover all the water on this particular this particular spot I'm going to be constant more on 12 to 3 because the margins here is probably going to be where fish are going to be lying. We did see a good pike moving here earlier so that would just that would be nice. But again just let it sink for about 25 seconds there. We've got a bit of cloud cover now, so... It's just that bit early, but, you know, nice to be at all the same. And it's still nice to be able to take fish off the surface this early, even though there's only a few. There we are, this one's on the humongous. This is definitely an overwinter fish. Absolutely rattled the fly. Absolutely rattled it. Probably about three. Oh yeah. size of a fish, probably looking at what, three and a half, maybe four pound? Kraken fight. I think this is probably one of the ones that went in late last season. So, not massively pristine, but good tail on it. So there you go. Okay. Gone. Well, with a great day of sport under our belt, we decide to call it call it quits and head back into the boathouse to catch up with Charlie Lush, who's the fishery manager, who's going to have a few words with us and let us know where this fishery is going for the future and a little bit about his work behind the scenes. So, Charlie, thank you very much for having us today at Butterston. It's uh, a, the, a lot of fishermen were worried that this place was was going to be closed, and it's such a stunning place to come and fish. But it's uh, been taken over last year uh, by Landover Experience Scotland, uh, and you're the the man given the task for running the fishery. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Tell a tell us a, a little bit about where it all come about and why you've taken it over and, and where you're going for the future. Well, the um, the fishery was was incorporated as part of the lease, mm -hmm. um, and they basically needed a. Uh, fishery manager to, to look after this side of things while they get on with the, the off roofing and the quads and everything else they do. Which is down at Dunkeld, yeah? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. This is their main HQ, so they meet here and then go to Dunkeld. And there's some tracks you know, on the moors between here and there. Okay. So it's quite well placed, really. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> a fellow colleague at the shooting school at Dunkeld just tipped me off that. Um, the boss of, of Land Rover Experience Scotland uh, might be looking for a fishery manager. Ah. So, uh, <laughs> and he said to me, so well, are you interested? And I said, yes, very. And he said, well, I think he's in this morning, so why well, don't you go and have a word with him? i tell you I was over there. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I collared him and um, I was, he was fine. I think he was, he was quite surprised, but probably quite chuffed that someone had you know, sure. taken an interest, uh, sure. you know, so early. Well, it's, um, it's, it's good to have somebody with, with a knowledge of fishing around such a lovely water like this. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the facilities here as well, you know, you've got motors on every boat. The boats are cracking boats, yeah, I must thing. admit. Yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, the, the batteries last all day, which is a good thing, yeah. unlike yeah, some other places. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. So you're, you're not only just a fishery manager, though. You've got a, you've got another few, few interests there, one of which is painting, so I believe. Yes, 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 um, yes, um, I paint and I, I write, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes the two go together, you know, mm -hmm. I, um, at the moment I'm painting a series of portraits um, based on the star of my current novel, which I'm just wrapping up, you know, and I did the same, same last time round about a year ago, so, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So that's all. Yeah, well, we we actually went earlier and had a had a look at some of these uh, paintings, uh, which were shown on the screen, and uh, yeah, very impressive, very impressive, and, and nice work. And you've you've sold them quite far and yes, far and wide, have you? Yes, I've sold quite a few mm-hmm. far and wide. Um, exhibited one or two in New York and around Scotland. No, oh, good. Yeah. yeah, well, it's certainly one of the best places to paint, and I'm well, sure you. It's, it's a good place, and I have a. Um, I have a, a, a lock, a Butterson lock yeah. series um, on Fantastic. the cards as soon as there's time. And the weather warms up a bit, yeah. my studio is bearable. That's it. Well, your website, <laughs> your, your website's on the screen, so anybody yes. wishing to go and have a look at them, yes. you know, it's, it's well worth doing, and uh, I'm sure you're going to get me, much, much inspiration for years yes, to come. Sure. Every evening, there's a little Well folks, that brings us to the end of another episode of Hooked UK. We've had a a great time up at Butterson, we've caught some lovely overwintered fish, we've caught plenty uh, of this season's newly stocked fish and it's it's a wonderful place to go and fish, you know, for whether you take the family or whether you go yourself for a day or evening session. It's uh, it's a lovely place and it certainly doesn't break the bank. Uh, Behind me we have the River Tay, which is where we're going to be heading for our next show. Uh, for the second of the series on this river and again we're going to be uh, trying to catch that elusive Atlantic salmon. I'm standing here below Neil Gow's famous oak where he used to compose uh, some of his famous tunes that he played on the fiddle and here is the commemorative seat that's been erected in his honour and it's a bit closer to home for me because recently one of uh, Lochie's or certainly Dundee's very own bards, uh, Scotland's bard, Michael Mara recently passed away and uh, this seat has also been marked to commemorate, commemorate his work and uh, what a fantastic work it was too. So that brings us to the end of this episode. Uh, I hope you could tune in next time. Uh, our web address is at the bottom of the screen if you're looking for any information uh, from this show or certainly any of our previous shows about locations, tactics, anything at all, please feel free to get in touch. And until next time, uh, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you again. Thank you.